that we just saw this funeral and he said what you didn't see in the photo was a clear bottom in the village yeah. full of simple bodies. Which was, I think, I threw in the story incremental, they had already said. Just picture you guys are seeing. I mean, not even, like, it's not controversial to say he's going to say they handed story. this picture out. Yeah. They handed out and the excuse me, could he prove said their off piece camera that it's there were yeah. Yeah. So we weren't going to do it. Hey, big boy. Yeah. Yeah. You got the full? Oh, but you can get me some of Okay, is that cool audio coming? Hey, Dave, it's Billy. So you are seeing them? Okay, thank you so much. All right. You're good. For me, it should be on. Now, I'm just plugged into the port, so it's just coming down the pool line. Leah has the boat to go back there. That's really true. No, there's no net on. This is all it is, is that they're in a remote location, and it's going to be reported to us in question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think on the second line, yeah. yeah. On, and that should be punched up. Yeah. Line two. <laughs> Especially with how to use all the gear. No, but last I didn't realize you had Radio. Yeah, I used to work for Blue Away. You used to sit down. Right. I used to be uh, in the booth at Freddy's. Yeah. So now. So you went back, back to your roots. Um, they have to go back to the booth. You mean Al. Al Pesky. Right, but there was there a dip that you were. Uh, that was cool. No, Alex, 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 Alex. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm just probably I'm mess, messing things okay. up. Yeah. Right. Did, did you uh, Nick, end up using anything from Mike and Jerry yesterday? Uh, I don't. I think we did last night at 6. I think. But Ours ended up getting dumped into the main story, uh, I think, in the end. Rice. We had a right yeah. story on it in the market, right. they ended up in that. I thought Jones was better. Yeah, see, for me to file a piece would have been would have been the same piece I filed with Dave Echo. Yeah. Almost to the Because we had the same message. Uh, General Thurman, this is Jim Turner in the Pentagon press office uh, press uh, room. Can you hear me? Yeah, Jim. Good morning. I got you loud and clear. Okay. Um, our briefer today is Major General James Thurman, Commanding General of the Multinational Div uh, Division Baghdad. He assumed command in January of this year and last spoke to us in June. The general is speaking to us from Camp Liberty in Baghdad and will provide an operational update on uh, the security operations in Baghdad and the surrounding areas and then answer your questions. And with that, General Thurman, I'll turn it over to you. Brian, thank you for that introduction. Good morning to everyone. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. When I last spoke to you in June, I discussed a new Baghdad security plan operation together forward. I said then that this is a critical period for the Iraqi government, where our mutual commitment and support are required. Three months later, we're still heavily engaged with that effort side by side with our Iraqi partners to secure Baghdad. I remain optimistic about the positive trends that I see. Before I take questions, I would like to briefly describe Operation Together Forward II and discuss some of the challenges and talk about Iraqis in the lead. Together Forward was planned with and as an Iraqi-led operation and designed to reduce the sectarian violence in focused areas identified by the Iraqi government. We also knew that we had to stop the terrorist cells and death squads. After a detailed assessment in August by the Iraqi government, we made significant adjustments. I specifically requested and received more Iraqi and coalition forces to come to Baghdad to help us secure the city. The 1st Brigade of the 9th Iraqi 
Army Division from Taji with the division headquarters, the 2nd Brigade of the 1st Armored Division, and the 172nd Striker Brigade. Combat team joined Multinational Division Baghdad in order to give us the right mix of combat power. Our strategy has three parts, clear, hold, and build. First, we secure an area by clearing it block by block and building by building with a combined Iraqi and coalition force. We search for contraband, illegal weapons, and evidence of terrorist activity. Second, once the focus area has been secured, Iraqi security forces hold it to create conditions for the local government to provide the immediate basic needs and services to the people. The building phase is ongoing in partnership with the Iraqi government, and it consists of the short, mid, and long-term restoration of the utility infrastructure in order to reverse 30 years of neglect. We've committed more than $8 million uh, to immediate civic action projects in these focus areas. The projects include those that create a uh, local employment environment and opportunities, economic opportunities, uh, throughout these areas. So how are we doing? Thus far, we've successfully conducted clearing operations and are holding in focused areas within the Belladeas, including more than 50 Muhalas. Our operations recently uh, moved to East Baghdad. Over the past couple of months, we're seeing a reduction in sectarian violence in Baghdad. As we clear a focus area, the murders and attacks are significantly reduced. However, we have seen an increase in attacks this past week, but mostly against coalition and Iraqi security forces. Why have we seen an increase in attacks? Well, we have twice as many forces operating throughout the city now. We're challenging the anti-Iraqi forces where they live and operate. We anticipated the enemy would push back as we moved into their sanctuaries, but we are disrupting and defeating them by forcing them to fight on our terms. The feedback we get from interacting with the people of Baghdad shows increased feelings of security in a majority of the focused areas. Citizens are slowly gaining more trust and confidence in their military and police forces. I visit these neighborhoods often. Each time I return, I find more people trying to get on with their lives. I see more shops opening and more people in the streets. I talk to the people to find out their needs. As we clean up the streets, we find a city capable of of starting to function proper. As the Iraqi civilian leadership has stated, unity and security are required in order to achieve long-term prosperity. Therefore, governmental involvement in the hold and build phases are paramount in order to maintain security and create functioning neighborhoods. Baghdad security hinges on the capabilities of the Iraqi security forces. They're fighting and dying for their country every day and have made great strides. And our great American soldiers have stood shoulder to shoulder with their Iraqi counterparts, assisting them every step of the way. In conclusion, murders have declined across the city due to Together Forward. Protecting the cleared areas requires the commitment of Iraqi soldiers, policemen, and the Iraqi people. The Iraqi Security forces have pledged their oath to the Iraqi uh, government and are moving forward. But military means alone cannot neutralize the insurgency and stop the sectarian violence. Political and economic interests are also critical to this effort. With the Council of Representatives back in session, we're optimistic that the government will move forward to deal with the militias and provide the unified support that the Iraqi security forces require and set those conditions for economic improvement. Our professional soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines assigned to Multinational Division Baghdad are committed in their support to the Iraqi people during this transition period. With that, I'll take your questions. Okay, well. Uh, General, this is Will Dunham with Reuters. Uh, could you please quantify uh, what you meant by uh, the increase in the number of attacks in the past week? And could you also quantify uh, the number of violent deaths you're seeing in Baghdad? as uh, compared to uh, where you were uh, earlier in the summer? Well, first off, uh, what I would tell you in terms of uh, murders, in the focused areas for Together Forward 2, 
uh, we went into those specific hot spots because those were the Shia Sunni fault lines uh, where we were having the sectarian violence occur. And we've decreased uh, murders in there by 50 percent. Uh, and as you go around these areas right now, we've significantly uh, dropped uh, the murders along those Shia Sunni fault lines. Now, what that's caused is for the enemy to move and push them to the outskirts of uh, Baghdad uh, province. And so we've, we're adjusting our security plan to go stop the violence in those areas. Uh, the decrease of, uh, of deaths on civilians has been by about 16% across Baghdad. Now what I've seen over the past week uh, has been an average of about 42 attacks a day against us, and we average about six that are effective attacks against us. An effective attack is where we get a soldier wounded or we get a piece of equipment damaged. And uh, so we are seeing that uh, as, we, uh, as we are conducting roughly around 10 operations over and above the uh, clear hold and build plan of, of uh, operation together forward. Can follow up please, um, the 16%, uh, the could you, what's the, what's the, what are you comparing that against, what time period, and also with the uh, 42 attacks, uh, could you give us a comparison to where it had been? Uh, yes, uh, uh, first off on the ladder, the 42 attack average, and oh by the way, that's 22% effectiveness this past week uh, uh, from a seven-day period. Uh, we've uh, seen that increase uh, over uh, roughly about uh, five to six attacks. So we were generally running around uh, uh, 38, 36 attacks a day against coalition inside of Baghdad. Still Together Forward Phase 2 began from uh, Operation Together Forward 1. And uh, th what I attribute the success to, of that is our ability to get in these uh, hot areas and get them uh, and clear those terrorists out of there. And I do think we have a lot of movement of terrorist activity trying to disrupt uh, what we're doing. Hence, it's got a rise in uh, attacks against us. General Thurman, it's Lolita Baldor with the Associated Press. Um, I've, I've seen some comments that you've made about uh, wanting some additional Iraqi security forces um, and that they are not complete, the ones that you've gotten are not um, completely filled. Can you tell us whether or not the Iraqis have met the commitment that, um, that they initially said for the troops that they would provide for the Baghdad operation? And can you also tell us how many Iraqi troops you have versus how many American troops? Well, first off, uh, I, uh, with, when we uh, worked this plan with the Iraqis, we asked for two additional Iraqi Army brigades. And they're still trying to fill that requirement. Uh, to date, uh, they've uh, moved approximately uh, two battalions uh, in uh, our battle space. And uh, they're still trying to meet that requirement. Uh, some of these uh, battalions, when they were formed, were formed uh, regionally. And some of the soldiers, uh, due to the distance, did not want to travel into Baghdad. And the uh, uh, Minister of Defense is working with that. I'm confident that they're going to, uh, going to meet that requirement uh, here within the next uh, few weeks. Uh, but it's going to take a little time, is what I would tell you. Follow up, do you, as, as a result of this, do you need more U.S. troops to <coughs> fill the void? I would tell you I need more Iraqi security forces. Uh, I don't think putting more coalition in here is the right answer. That's my, uh, my answer because I think with the security forces from the Iraqi side that we have, they're committed. I just watched an operation the, uh, this week in Mansur, which is a very dangerous area, and I watched the 5th Brigade of the 6th Iraqi Army uh, go into that area, no notice. We didn't tell them till 0400 that morning, 
and they went in there and started conducting operations in there uh, quickly using Iraqi uh, command and control uh, and Iraqi forces. The only thing we had with them was a uh, U.S. Uh, MIT team. You didn't, uh, I, I'd ask how many Iraqi and how many total U.S. and Iraqi forces you had? Yes, I can tell you that. Uh, currently uh, in multinational division Baghdad, uh, there are over 69,000 forces. That's coalition and a, an Iraqi army. Now in Baghdad uh, proper, which is Baghdad city, we've got 54 battalions, of which uh, there are 15,000 coalition, that's 14 U.S. combat battalions, and 15 Iraqi army battalions. Uh, so we roughly got about 15,000 coalition uh, combat forces, 9,000 Iraqi army combat forces, 12,000 national police, and 22,000 local police. And that's station police, patrol police, and traffic police that's on the streets. General Herman Barbara Starr from CNN, I'm sorry to follow up on all these statistics and numbers. But when you say you have 9,000 Iraqi army in Baghdad City, essentially, what is, go back to what you said a minute ago, if you could, that you uh, have a requirement for two brigades, Iraqi brigades, and they've moved in two battalions. So uh, help, help me understand what the total Iraqi requirement is in Baghdad City compared to the 9,000 you have there right now? And are, there, are those 9,000 on station in Baghdad City? Okay, Barbara, let me uh, try to explain this a little further. When we go into an area and clear it, uh, the, the next step is to hold and build civil capacity. And I've got two areas, specifically Baya and Nadora uh, uh, Belideas that I would like to put an Iraqi army brigade's worth of combat power in there. So they can hold that area and all those mahalas and protect the people and bolster that security. And currently what we have in these focused areas, I have a U.S. battalion committed in there that's working side by side with Iraqi army and Iraqi police. So I felt like we needed more Iraqi security forces in those areas. And that's what I've, uh, I've told my uh, superior commanders uh, that I felt like we needed. And so I laid that requirement on the uh, uh, multinational forces and to the, to the government uh, uh, to uh, provide those forces. And I think that will get us where we need to be. What I was really asking was, Rather than it, uh, speaking of it in brigades and battalions, can you tell us numerically how many, what is your shortfall of Iraqi forces when you said that you've asked for two brigades and they've moved in two battalions? Numerically, how sh number one, how short, how many numbers short are you on Iraqi forces in Baghdad? And my other question is when you said that you tell, you, for example, you told this Iraqi unit on a no-notice basis. Are you telling Iraqi units to move on a no-notice basis because of your concern about them maintaining operational security, or do you tell them about missions ahead of time? Okay, Barbara, the answer to your last question, we fight the enemy in here. And the first thing we do is, is is a good assessment of what's going on and to be able to move quickly in these areas. There's 534 Mahalas inside of Baghdad. And Baghdad is a dense city with 6.8 million people, as you well know. What I still need in here in terms of battalions from the Iraqi army that I would like to see is approximately six battalions. And uh, the government is working to do that. And uh, so I think where you find ourselves right now, uh, since we got in here, we only had two brigades in the lead, uh, roughly six battalions. And now we're up to over 26 battalions across our battle space in the lead, 
and I've got the 6th Division in here and the 9th Division. 6th Division operating on the uh, west side of the uh, Tigris River, what we call Kark, and the uh, 9th Division operating on the east side, what we call Rasafa. And then in Baia and uh, also in uh, Dora, we have the National Police. I got two National Police Brigades operating down in those areas, and uh, I felt like we needed more Iraqi Army in there to work side by side with the police and the National Police, because those have been bad areas. And we're clearing the enemy out of there, and we don't want them to come back. Iraqi Army Battalions, how many people? Roughly an Iraqi Army Battalion is between uh, around 500 people. And so I don't want to get into specific numbers of each unit. Would we be fair to say in the news media roughly then, roughly approximately 3,000 Iraqi additional troops are needed in Baghdad in your estimation? I'd say uh, it's roughly six battalions worth, and uh, if you took each battalion around 500 or so, you'd be close at that. General Thurman, this is Courtney Cuby from NBC News. By my calculations, there are a little bit more than 30,000 Iraqi security forces in Baghdad right now operating as part of Operation Together Forward. Is that correct? Is that correct? If you count the uh, 9,000 Iraqi Army, 12,000 National Police, and 22,000 Iraqi Army, you're pretty close. So I, I guess I'm just a little confused. We keep hearing here that there's more than 300,000 Iraqi security forces that are trained and equipped. And then we continue to hear that Baghdad is, is the central focus, the main mission right now in, this, in Iraq. So why is it that about, only about 10% of the entire Iraqi security forces are in the area of Baghdad when it's supposed to be the central focus right now, the, the major part, of the major campaign? Now, well, first off, the 300,000 is all across Iraq. And those are allocated, the forces are allocated by uh, General Corelli and General Casey, depending upon the other provinces that are out there inside of Iraq. Uh, so the forces that I have allocated to me, I've actually got uh, uh, 10 Iraqi Army Brigades, of which three of the Iraqi Army Brigades are, are serving in the Babil, Karbala, and Najaf provinces. Uh, two Iraqi division headquarters, which are all in, in Baghdad, and I've got the three additional brigades that work with the 8th Division, which is in the Karbala, Babil, and Najaf. But uh, what I've asked for is, is those additional Iraqi army units to come in to bolster the security inside of uh, uh, Baghdad city. Julian Barnes with the LA Times General. Um, are you disappointed that uh, the Ministry of Defense seems to be unable to bring these additional forces uh, into Baghdad uh, if you're still lacking uh, six battalions that you've uh, requested? And how are, uh, you, how are you or the Ministry of Defense moving to try to get those forces into Baghdad? Well, first off, I'm never disappointed. Uh, I think you got to look at where the new government's at. You know, this government just got started here back in, uh, uh, seated in May and June and started operating. It's now September. Uh, you know, we started with security forces with nothing. And three years later, I think we've done a pretty good job here of building the force that we got. He has other issues that he's trying to deal with across the country. And so there's competing uh, security uh, demands and needs across Iraq. And I just know uh, after working with these guys for over nine months uh, throughout the government and the new Minister of Defense, I believe he's very much committed uh, to what we need and he's working hard to uh, meet those requirements. Will the Iraqi army be able to take over if it's not able to order its uh units to move around Iraq. If its units are all stationary, how can it take uh, control of the security situation? Well, I think, uh, first off, 
uh, we're working with them to make them more mobile. Uh, I know uh, General Dempsey is working on that uh, with what he does. And, uh, you know, we moved the 9th Division in here uh, in about 72 hours and got them operating in here. That's not too bad. But there's other units that are at varying levels of training. And, you know, we're still training and developing these units in contact with the enemy. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's uh, not going uh, well. Uh, what I would tell you is I think the government is trying to come to grips with the security needs and we have a determined enemy out there that's trying to disrupt this government, a democratic form of government. And uh, we're here assisting them uh, to work through these tough security issues. General, it's Nick Simeone at Fox News. Does the military plan to move into Sadr City, or maybe you already have, and uh, disarm militias there? Well, first off, I'm in Sadr City all the time. It's a misnomer to say we don't go into Sadr City. I myself walk in the streets of Sadr City. And, you know, we don't need to paint an enemy that's 15 feet tall here. Uh, I'm not going to discuss future operations with you. But we conduct combined patrolling in there with Iraqi security forces, with police and army units in Sadr City every day. And I'd invite you to come over here and go with me, and we'll go in there. There's also a report that two of Muqtada al-Sadr's um, aides have been arrested and detained. Can you confirm that? Uh, what I would tell you is we're going to arrest anybody that's operating outside the rule of law that's conducting violence against uh, people the Iraqi people and civilians. If they're responsible for, for death group activity, if they're responsible for vehicle-borne IEDs, and, and they're responsible for killing Iraqi citizens, our coalition, we're going to arrest them. Nobody's above the rule of law over here. Do you hear me? Uh, General, does that... Um threat include Muqtada al-Sadr himself? I'm not going to comment on uh, Muqtada al-Sadr. He is a political figure over here, and I am not targeting Muqtada al-Sadr, if that's your question. And I'm not going to uh, comment on future operations that we're planning. I have one more question. Uh, General, it's Kay Maddox from Voice of America. Um, you describe um, Operation Together Forward in its second phase as very successful, um, but all last week and then again just this morning there were reports that 10 dead bodies were found as part of this sectarian violence that continues. And I wonder if you can answer for me, you do mention that you go into hot spots and moves other people, moves the enemy into other areas. How well are you doing if dead bodies continue to be discovered throughout Baghdad? Well, uh, that is a major concern of mine. If there's one thing that I want to lower is the amount of murders and senseless killings and the kidnappings. Uh, I attribute that to sectarian uh, problems. And I attribute it back to death groups. I think one of the sources of death groups are malicious, because I believe the malicious are operating outside the rule of law and they're holding the rule of law in contempt. And I consider that issue a problem that the government must deal with immediately. And uh, that's the source of this. Forgive me. We have been able to drop the murder rate. In Mosafi, we it was 6.8 murders a day, and it's down now down to 1.1 murders. And we're talking 6.8 million people across Baghdad here. Just a quick follow-up, General. Can you be specific about the areas in Baghdad where this operation is uh, occurring that you've had a lot of success? Uh, we lost some audio there. You may have said that already, but can you give us sort of a list of the areas in which you're doing well? Yeah. Uh, on 7 August, we started in Dora, uh, specifically Mosafi. Mosafi is the Haya uh, neighborhood, if you will, with a series of mahalas of where we were finding a lot of uh, dead bodies. 
mainly due to uh, sectarian uh, killings, death groups. Uh, Amaria. Uh, we went into Amaria. We, we have cleared that area. We have already started building the electrical network back in those Mahalas. We're reestablishing a police station in there. Uh, Gazalia, another area, and Shula Nur. And then we shifted over into Atamiya, and we've cleared that. We're now operating in Shab Ur. And also, uh, we are looking at other areas inside of Baghdad right now. And so, if you go look at these areas and look what's happening on an average day of how we're holding and building civil capacity by putting more police in there and having the Iraqi security forces and police interact more with the people, it's building more trust and confidence. And we're into areas, uh, Sunni areas, that never allowed people in there. Uh, and they did not like what the government was doing. And we're seeing some positive changes here over since we started this. Uh, about a, we're about a month into this, a little over a month, as we're working uh, this plan. But decisive to this operation is our ability to build a civil capacity at providing the basic essential services and security for the Iraqi people. And that's what we're trying to help the government do. Uh, General Thurmond, uh, do you have any closing remarks for us? Yes, uh, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to provide my assessment of the situation here in Baghdad and the courageous effort being put forth by a coalition and Iraqi forces. The citizens of Baghdad are seeing a difference, specifically in the areas we have cleared. The homes, the schools, the hospitals are receiving increases in supplies and electricity. The local councils are leading the effort to clean up their neighborhoods and identify their needs. It's important to understand that we are working to restore 30 years of neglect. The whole point is to keep the people looking forward to a better future. It will take time and it requires more than just a military solution to stop violence. The Iraqis have to want unity and security more than we do and I believe we're beginning to see that. I'd like to close by thanking the American people for their continued support of both our soldiers and their families. We would like to especially send our thoughts and prayers to those families and of those soldiers who have made the ultimate sacrifice and those that have been wounded, protecting freedom in our great nation. God bless all of you and thanks for allowing me the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you, sir.